Spiritual Unfoldment, Part 5 Spiritual Unfoldment The gradual development or revelation of the spiritual Spiritual retardment Lack of spiritual unfoldment First, know thyself. What are thy ideals? What are thy purposes? What is the ideal spiritually, mentally, materially? Then make thy ideals conform in thy experiences and in thy activity. Study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman not ashamed, stressing the word where the stress is to be put, according to that ideal, remembering, ever, that the Lord thy God is one Lord. In all, then, there must be the answering to the law of nature, the law of mind, and the law of spirit. The expression of self in writing would be the outlet best for the entity's unfoldment and advancement, and it would be well to begin in the present environ. Read a portion of scripture. Not haphazardly but regularly as a routine, daily, and there will come those unfoldments in the daily experience. For, there is such great sensitiveness that most any desire may be brought to pass in the entity's seeking and putting its trust in the source of all strength. If the entity is to be aided and abetted to find its rightful place in the unfoldment of experiences or conditions before it, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman not ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth and keeping self unspotted from condemnation of self or of others. In the chemical field, or chemistry combined with electrotherapy, we will find the channels through which the training should be for this particular entity. As to the appearances in the earth, we find that these have been quite varied. Not all may be given, but those that may indicate the urges which may be applied in the experiences of the entity for the present unfoldment for being able to live with self. Few people, few individual souls really enjoy the companionship of themselves. Not merely because they love themselves the less or that they despise themselves the more. But their thoughts and things, and the emotions of the body, are seldom in accord one with the other. Or their individuality and their personality don't reflect the same shadow in the mirror of life. Keep the faith, but find self in its daily activities in the service of the Lord. For they who train, who direct the young to the service of the master, shall indeed find in self, harmony, peace. Music ever is a part of the entity's harmony, but is from afar off. These activities, too, should be a part of the entity's unfoldment in and through same. For children. Study then to show thyself approved unto God, a workman not ashamed, rightly dividing the words of truth and keeping self unspotted from condemnation. For unfoldment, know that this tendency for speaking of others' faults, others' failures, should be put away more and more, in self's dealings with others. Rather in every conversation, magnify the virtues of others, rather than their faults. Am I following the right course of action in the expression and unfoldment of my spiritual work? The try is counted for righteousness. To say this or that has all that is to be offered would be an error. But when one applies self, the ways and the means are shown, provided the activities are carried on as the entity has been heretofore prompted to do. Jesus, the Christ, is the mediator. And in him, and in the study of his examples in the earth, is life. And that ye may have it more abundantly. He came to demonstrate, to manifest, to give life and light to all. Here, then, ye find a friend, a brother, a companion. As he gave, I call ye not servants, but brethren. For, as many as believe, to them he gives power to become the children of God, the Father, joint heirs with this Jesus, the Christ, in the knowledge and in the awareness of this presence, abiding ever with those who set this ideal before them. What, then, is this as an ideal? As concerning thy fellow man, he gave, as ye would that others do to you, do ye even so to them, take no thought, worry not, be not over-anxious about the body for he knoweth what ye have need of. In the place thou art, in the consciousness in which ye find yourself, is that which is today, now, needed for thy greater, thy better, thy more wonderful unfoldment.
But today hear his voice, come unto me, all that are weak or that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest from those worries, peace from those anxieties. For the Lord loveth those who put their trust wholly in him. This, then, is that attitude of mind that puts away hates, malice, anxiety, jealousy. And it creates in their stead, in that mind is the builder, the fruits of the spirit. Love, patience, mercy, long-suffering, kindness, gentleness. And these. Against such there is no law. They break down barriers, they bring peace and harmony, they bring the outlook upon life of not finding fault because someone forgot, someone's judgment was bad, someone was selfish today. These ye can overlook, for so did he. In his own experience with those that he had chosen out of the world, if he had held disappointment in their leaving him to the mercies of an indignant high priest, a determined lawyer and an unjust steward, what would have been thy hope, thy promise today? For he, though with the ability to destroy, thought not of such but rather gave himself, that the creative forces, God, might be reconciled to that pronouncement, that judgment. And thus mercy, through the shedding of blood, came into man's experience. For who made or set principles in the experience of the entity? It is that the entity has chosen as its ideal, whether it be in those things related to the solar spiritual life, or in the mental unfoldments of the body itself, or in those things of the body force or body mind, that has been and is a part of all that has to do with bringing harmony and the whole influence to the body expressions. As to the experiences of the entity in the earth, while these have not been such a great number, their variations are worth making note of. And these are given with a desire to aid the entity in interpreting much that comes into self's experience. While the entity is in those periods that have to do with various activities, the urges arise from latent and innate interests in certain chosen fields. Yet not in the same manner as most individuals who are interested in such, but to be used as a state or period of promotion for an unfoldment in the body, mind and purpose. The activities of Mars, Jupiter, Saturn, Mercury, we may find the helpful influences of a universal consciousness, applied in the diplomatic manner that is a part of the experience, will bring good in the experience and in the environs of the entity. And these will be sound judgments and be unfoldments and developments for the entity that will be sowing the seeds of that the entity sets as its ideal. Apply that in the daily experience, then, and we will find life becoming more interesting, more worthwhile. And what is life? God manifested in the material plane. For it is still in him that we live and move and have our being. Thus life as a material manifestation is the expression of that universal force or energy we call God. one of spiritual or divine science rather than Christian science, who would give the body counsel in its developing era or period of unfoldment of spiritual self, of body emotions, of mental abilities, to correct these relationships and these activities. From the spiritual desire to be clean every whit. Few people have considered that injunction regarding being perfect in the day and generation, or clean every whit. These are body, mind and soul. For we would choose from these records that which if applied, in those manners in which there is a greater unfoldment for the mental and spiritual purposes of the entity, will find the entity changing the conditions as related to the physical disturbances of the body. In choosing, then, from these records, these we do with a desire and purpose that this may be a helpful experience, enabling the body to find greater harmony, greater peace in the present sojourn. In giving the astrological aspects, these are latent and manifested, Mercury, Venus, Jupiter, Saturn and Mars. These are adverse in some respects one to another, yet are ever-present, and will be indicated in that in which the body will go to excess in many ways, unless there is the real training in the periods of unfoldment. And the entity is beginning to reach that period when, while the spirit must not be broken, everyone should be very firm and positive with the entity, inducing the entity through reason to analyze self and to form the proper concepts of ideals and purposes, and in doing this, we will not only give to the world a real individual with genius, but make for individual soul development. Otherwise, we will give to the world one of genius in making trouble for somebody. 
First, analyze self. Choose thy ideal spiritual, mental and material. And then so budget thy life that ye will add something daily to each phase of thy unfoldment. Do associate or connect with those activities in which growth in all of these may be thy opportunity. Great opportunities are offered thee in this experience. Don't miss them. As an active influence in those groups that may change much as to the preparations for the greater unfoldment in the earth, the entity may contribute much. In the home as well as in its efforts. First, we would give that the body turn about in its application of itself to those channels and outlets in which it may contribute to and advise with, be patient with, and help those who are in varied stages of unfoldment, in a mental and spiritual application of tenets and truths that constantly give individuals hope. For so long as there is life, there is hope. So long as there is hope, there is possibility. So long as there is possibility, love may better direct rather than hate. And love is God. If God is present, there may be broad opportunities for all, as well as for the entity, in whom such manifestations may be made manifest. Before that the entity was in the Holy Land, when there were those periods of choices being made among the Essenes of those for the channel through which there might come the expected one. The entity was among those mothers, whose daughter was in that group on the stair, even when Mary was chosen. Then the entity was very active in those groups. And with the coming of the expressions from Elizabeth and Mary, the entity was a companion to each of them in the giving out to other groups. And the entity was among those who were much disturbed by the edict when many of the daughters of Rachel wept because of the edict in that district. The name then was Matcha. The entity gained. And from there comes the great balance in mind and body and purpose of the entity. Do not starve either of these phases of thy unfoldment, for all that is in mind and body first appears in spirit. Keep each, then, in its proper relation one to another, if the entity would contribute the more to the activities in the earth. The law of the Lord is perfect. Not men's conception of it. The law will be fulfilled. Will ye do it or let someone else do it? These should be choices. Will ye seek to know the law? For the Lord hath not willed that any soul should perish, but hath prepared ways of escape. He who seeks will find. He who knocks, to him it will be opened. These are irrefutable, these are unchangeable. What would ye do about them? This is left to the individual. The Lord can only offer. Man, as his child, as a co-creator with the creative forces, accepts or rejects. There's no halfway. You are or you are not. To be sure, there are various stages of unfoldment, of development, but use that thou knowest to do, and the Lord will give thee the next step. He doesn't fail in his promises, even though ye may be far, far away. If the strong temperament and ideal of the entity are set in a materialistic frame of activity, this will only bring those things that are as moth and rust, that doth corrupt both mind and body. But if the tenets and truths are used that are ever creative, in that the earth is the Lord's and the fullness thereof, to bring happiness, peace, harmony into the experience of the entity, there may indeed be an experience in the earth that is a growth, an unfoldment and a development for the entity, but there must be the applications of truth in such measures as for the results to be deserved by the entity. It is not by chance, or merely for the gratifying of the desires of the body, that the entity came into this particular experience at this period. For the entity's own unfoldment it was needed, as may be indicated in the environs that have been brought to the body itself, as to how patience and long-suffering are to be shed in its own immediate environ, and never lost sight of. For these are materially manifested in associations one with another. There are abilities in abundance within the entity for activities, if they are put into use from the seed of the spirit of truth, and not from those of hate, malice, jealousy, the things that make people afraid, those things that cause timidity within the associations, and fear. For as has been so oft quoted, and so little interpreted in people's lives, the consciousness of God's presence, as manifested in Christ, casteth out fear. Casteth out fear. And shall make one free indeed. Not free in that of lewdness or selfishness, but in the way of a new commandment I give you, that ye love one another, even as I have loved you. 
This the freedom that makes, as it were, for this body the whole world akin and less and less of those things that have disturbed the body in its relationships with others, in relationships in its home and with its neighbors. There have come through the various periods of man's unfoldment, teachers proclaiming this the way, here the manner in which he may know, and yet in the teacher of teachers is found the way, he who even in himself fulfilled the law. For when God said, let there be light there came light into that which he had created, that was without form and was void, and it became the word, and the word dwelt among men and men perceived it not. The word today dwells among men, and many men perceive it not. 